Hi, welcome to Outside the Comfort Zone, where we talk about things we probably should not be talking about. We should stop. Yeah. No more talking. Well, I should stop talking. Well, I'm sick, so I should actually stop talking. You should. I'm just going to talk the entire time. Okay, yeah. Actually, there's an issue with that, because people don't like hearing you talk. I don't believe that that's true. Um, So so go fuck yourself. I'm glad you're sick. Well, I'm not glad I'm sick. I, I am. If I... If I wasn't sick, like, I'm like quarantined in my living room right now, <laughs> um, and it's awful. And like Jamie's being quarantined in the uh, apartment for like two weeks now because she got a concussion at work, mm. and she's uh, she's kind of dying, but she'll be okay. Yeah, yeah. Is she is she feeling better now? No, not really. Oh, that's she. Um, she can like look at her phone for like an hour at a time now. Oh, that's good. Which is better than, like, you know, not being able to look at it at all. Yeah. <laughs> Just being stuck and not being able to look at a screen. What did she do all day? Uh, like, like, what does she do all day while she's at home? No, like, what did she do when she couldn't look at, like, the TV or her phone or, like, like what did oh, she do? Yeah. She, she does a lot of uh, uh, sleeping. Oh, yeah. And then she, she uh, like, bakes stuff. Uh, and listens to podcasts. She was she started listening to Serial because I told her to start listening to Serial podcast. I heard that's so good. It is really good. It's like making a murderer, but a podcast, <laughs> and it's like equally as frustrating. Mm-hmm. It's great though. You should listen to it. I might. I listen to it when I'm driving sometimes. And then you just get really road ragey. I do. I'm like ah, because it's like it's about this uh, this 17 year old kid, who so. If my voice sounds weird, it's because I was sick, so piss off. Um, but (laughs) it's about this, like, 17-year-old kid who, who was, like, convicted for murdering his ex-girlfriend in, like, where are they? Like, Wyoming or something like that? Uh, Baltimore. Baltimore. Um, but, yeah, he gets convicted of, of killing his girlfriend, or his ex-girlfriend, and he spent, like, 15 years in jail, and then, like this reporter was like hey i i saw your story and i wanted to you know check the facts and see if you actually did it and he's like i didn't (coughs) this is uh really exciting to hear you coughing (coughs) does anyone else cringe when you hear someone coughing i always cringe uh i feel like shit um (laughs) but anyways he like it's like uh i think it's like 15 or like 12 episodes or something and it's like an hour long, but it's like a really well done podcast. I'm like, fuck, we should do a podcast. That's good. <laughs> we should uh, start all over again and do something that doesn't suck. Yeah, we should. Because, I mean, like a really well done podcast like sounds awesome. Like, like I think I think I like our podcast, but like, like I think what makes hers awesome is that like uh, she talks about cool stuff. <laughs> um, like like murders and stuff. But and we're, we're just like, Penises. so you know what I did today? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I did? You know what? People, there are podcasters that I listen to that are literally paying their entire fucking mortgage just from this. Like, they make a thousand yeah. plus dollars. So, you guys should go and support us on Patreon. But, like, legitimately, send us emails to outside the comfort zone at outlook.com and let us know what you want to see. Because I was talking to Timothy on You Now, and he wants, like, topics in the hat, and people want speed round back and stuff. So, we should, like, I think we just need to structure it a little bit more again. Yeah, yeah, I think that'd be good. So we'll change it up a little. We can, uh, yeah, and I think if we can figure out how to do um, more, uh, yeah, yeah, like structure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, structure. So this one will be the exception because Justin and I are recording this in separate places. So it's kind of hard to really structure something when you're not together to structure it. Um, which yeah, I think is I think funny like, like, <laughs> because you always come over when I'm sick, but when you're sick, I'm like, ooh, no, because I'll catch it. Yeah, you're like, no, don't come over. I, I'm going to die. Well, I, honestly, I didn't want to like come over anyway, so this works. Um, I mean, like, I just, I think it's funny how I wouldn't like come to your house because like I thought about it and yeah. then I was like, no, but I have a date tomorrow, so I don't want to get sick for that. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I don't want to get sick, but I don't care if he gets sick. Well, I mean, sick. it's about damn time for you to get sick because you never get sick when I'm sick. No, well, I never get sick really ever, and yeah. then so when I do get sick, I kind of turn into like a baby. Like you know, you know those commercials that when the guy gets sick, it's like the man cold. Yeah, that's just like, a fact. Can you call my mom, and yeah, that's a hundred percent how I am. Did like, you call your mom today? 
I did, yeah. <laughs> um, it's well, I went and actually saw her yesterday because um, I was sick. But um, I think it was yesterday. No, two days ago. No, yesterday. Oh. Uh, two days ago. It was two days ago. <laughs> Thanks um, for clarifying. But yeah, sorry, I was just trying to clarify my internal because mm-hmm. I was. Well, I went to work this morning and. Um, one of the girls I work with like comes into the office and she looks at me. She's like, "Well, you look like shit. Go home." I was like, <laughs> "Okay," because I felt like shit and I was just like hacking up a storm at my desk. And they were like, "Yeah, go home. We don't want to get sick." So, <laughs> please leave. Yeah, I went home from work today, but then like it, it's like I never go home from work sick because I know that like I could be making a hundred dollars or like a hundred fifty dollars or whoever much like my hourly wages. But then, like, so when I go home, I'm like, I just spent, like, over 100 bucks mm. to come home. Yeah. Like, I just paid $100 for a day off. That's, like, yeah. is it worth it? <laughs> well, what about your other 15 jobs? Like, what, Well, I mean, like... What's your like, schedule they're like? like, weekends. Oh, okay. So my okay. schedule, it's like, it's, like, all over the place. Like, I have, like, my normal job, which is, like, 8.30 to 4.30, Monday to Friday. And then I have, like, my, my, my second job, which is, like... Uh, like I'm shooting or I'm doing some stuff like Friday evening and I'm shooting some stuff Sunday and then I'm shooting some stuff the Sunday after that and like it's just kind of random ass Mm -hmm. and then my other one is like whenever weddings pop up okay so So we're really gonna put a lot of effort into this podcast because you have so much free time I have tons of free time so yeah what I'm gonna do is take all my free time and pour it into this podcast so Uh, that like legitimately um, we should because you could like maybe get a job off of your table if we actually make some good yeah, money with it. I mean, if, yeah, if this is, I mean, like, we're doing this every week, we might as well make money doing it. I know. Like, this is one of those things that people are like, it's a hobby, but it became a job. Like, I would love for that to happen because this is so fun and I like the interaction with people, but it's also like, there's really no reward right now beyond, like, the interaction of people. Yeah. Like, the reward right now is, like, we get to meet a whole bunch of cool people. But we don't even get to meet them. We got to do a meetup this summer, P.S., which yeah, is the yeah, thing. Yeah, we do. We got to go to West Ed yeah. and have a huge meetup. Anyone who's in Edmonton, email us and be like, I'd come. I'd come. I, I, yeah, I would yeah. go. Let us know. Like, comment or whatever and let us know. Because, yeah, we should do that. Because, yeah, I, I like meeting people. Yeah. And I mean, like, I like meeting people in my, like, normal jobs, too. That's why I'm, like, in the industry I'm in, I think. And, like, that's why I'm, like, trying to do what I'm trying to do is because I just love people. So. Yeah. And all of our other meetups have been really fun. Yeah, they have. Oh, maybe Except I can bring that, Alex. That oh, yeah, that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, most, about, most of that was fun. the new but... guy you, you trapped and... and <laughs> I trapped and him. forced to become yours. My, I thought you were going to go with, like, sex slave or something. Um, no, God, no, that's gross. God, no. Consent is important, guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, so I am officially in a relationship. Sorry to disappoint all you gentlemen I saw, callers. I saw it on Facebook, and I was like, what the hell, like... She made it Facebook official. That means, like, like what? I was so confused. <laughs> okay. So here's what happened. He had this bet with his friends going that his friends said that he would get into a relationship before his birthday, which was March 6th, I think. Sorry, Alex. I think it's the 6th. And um, so I just told him, like, listen, we don't have to date until after your birthday. Like, win the bet. Get your alcohol because I'm a cool girlfriend. And then Mm. on the night of his birthday at like 1 a.m., he called me and he was wasted out of his mind. And he's like, so are we dating now? And I was like, yeah, but you should go to bed and we should talk about this tomorrow in case you like completely regret this phone call. So the next day we went out to lunch and And we're like, and he's like, I I want to break up (laughs) after one day. So I was in a relationship. No. Um, So we're dating and he won the bet and I'm going to be on their podcast this Thursday, I think. Um, so I'll let you guys know when that's out, but that'll be cool. So you can kind of listen to him and he's been on a couple of my videos and the podcast videos and stuff. And we're going to Vivo tomorrow. I'm so excited. So like, what's it like being with a guy? Like now, like you haven't, you haven't had like a boyfriend for a while. I haven't. Okay. I haven't had what I would consider a legitimate relationship in almost three years. I've had yeah, like, because like, th- th- you know, there was like things. that one or two that like just like weren't real. Yeah, they they were like very very short, and it was just like way too dramatic. And then I had things with people, and but I haven't had a relationship, and it's strange. I'm getting used to like thinking about another person more than like just thinking about me, which is weird. 
but I like yeah, it. I like you're that like, you're like a talk. super selfish person. I am. I you like know, legitimately. I'm a super selfish person. Like I don't <laughs> do a lot of stuff because I'm like I don't know. That makes me uncomfortable. I don't want to do it. But like, I definitely yeah, notice that you I'm have like, to, like go outside your comfort zone. <laughs> Oh, like I'm going on Thursday and I'm going to record a podcast at his place and then I'm going to go to a comedy show and I'm going to meet all of his friends and like the idea of that is exciting but like on a even bigger level I'm like oh my god that sounds so scary but I'm going to do it because well, like that's what like, relationships are because <laughs> I have to like go outside and like meet all these new people and like I'm good like one on one but once I meet like a bunch of people I'm like oh my god this is too much oh my god you get like yeah so we're going to just I, dive I on like in I, I feel like more comfortable the more people there is. Well, I think it like it depends. Like if I meet like a group of like 10 people, I'm like instantly more comfortable than if I'm just meeting like one person. Okay, but is that like a group of people who already know each other and then you're like the stranger coming in? Cuz that's what uh, makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. But Yeah, see like I I'm, I'm I'm super comfortable when like nobody knows each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, like, but then, like, yeah. If, if there's a group of people that already know each other, like, if I know like a couple people in the group, I'm okay. Mm-hmm. But like, but, just like, knowing yeah, one person, know. I'm like, I don't want to be that like annoying, clingy person who's just like, mm, yeah, but I'm like, here too. To yeah. Yeah. Like I had with the last guy that I was seeing, the one who <laughs> <laughs> left. He's just like, okay, bye. So he and his group of friends oh, were oh, the guys so who, like, went to Thailand. Yeah, Thailand guy. He and his friends know. were super fucking clicky. Like, I would stay over at his place every once in a while, and they would only, like, talk to each other, and I would only talk to him because none of them would talk to me. And I was like, this is so awkward. Why am I even here? And I'm sure his yeah, friends aren't like, like um, that, but... Yeah, did you have, like, a lot of girlfriends? Yeah. Like, did that make you uncomfortable? No, because I don't care if someone has girlfriends, like, at all. But I do care if your girlfriends are bitchy and don't talk to any new people <laughs> like, fuck. but like maybe they're bitchy because they're like they don't know if you're good enough for him oh they're probably right right yeah truth i mean like you'd be the same way like it, it, well i guess like you you would pretend to be nice like i would go out of like okay here's the thing jesse brought over a new girl never met her and like from his past his, track uh, record he doesn't have the greatest taste in women but yeah, he's pretty shitty taste. Every except time, for one, except for that her. one, we liked her. That one, but <laughs> this one, like super nice, right off the bat. I totally held a conversation with her, and turns out she's a lovely person because I gave her a fucking shot. And I feel like this is coming off very like I don't want to meet his friends, but I do, and they sound awesome. And like I've talked on the phone to one of them when he was drunk, and like they sound super cool. But just from like a past experience it makes me a little bit nervous when i'm in that situation where i'm with a bunch of people who know each other and i don't know any of yeah. them right. but okay. i'll do it and then we'll report back we'll have a so like probably boring story yeah. next week like it was good never mind nothing to yeah, worry about report back and be like yeah so like he has his one girlfriend i like as soon as i walked in she punched me in the throat and <laughs> me that i was a whore and i was like you right <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Oh my god, can we talk uh, about the so, Facebook so, status and all the fucking comments on there? What what Facebook status? The the relationship status. Did you read the comments on there? Oh yeah, no, I, yeah, I read them because I was replying to them. And I was <laughs> I was in that conversation. They're, like all of his friends are comedians, right? So there were so they, fucking many. I've never seen someone get so excited about a fucking relationship status ever. But yeah, his friends were out. into it. And then I was like, um, I was like making fun of you because I was like, hey, like, like she's you, a slut. You, you uh, and I was like, yeah, get out yeah. now. And then one of his friends was like, like, oh, offered you an out, marry her. Yeah. So and then I want to, I kind of want to find that status. Okay, like, I'm on yeah, it now. And then, was, um, and then my mom commented. <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> and she was like, hey, is he going to come camping with us? And, and then oh I just like God. went on there right away. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, he can't come. I'm always a little bit hesitant to bring someone out there <laughs> because it's just like a lot. Yeah, like they'll get roasted. They like, will. No matter who it is. Oh, I really wish. But, like Jamie didn't at all. Like, I mean, like it's different when it's a girl. If it, like when you bring a guy out, it's a lot. Oh, yeah. You totally like. I, have I brought a guy out? Oh, yeah. I brought Bracken once, I think. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, I totally remember yeah, that I did. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I blocked that out for a second. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that. Pretty sure we talked about that on the podcast already, but yeah, I think so. Pretty that sure. Happened. So uh, go find that um, podcast because there were some stories in there. But yeah, I mean, yeah, but I don't know. I like him, and I I think he would do well around it because he. One thing I really like about Alex is he is like a loud personality, but he's not like obnoxious. Like he's not going to try to one up everyone in the conversation, which is such a fucking annoying one-uppers. trait. They're, it's like shut the fuck up. Yeah. But, like I like when you yeah, can hold your you're, own. You're like, you're like, oh, I, I went to Calgary like four times this year. Like I'm sick of going down there, and they're like, I went five times. <laughs> But, like, whatever. And I'm, like, <laughs> so super tired of going down there. Like, I got actually really yeah. sick. And I'm like, that's fucking great. I wish you died. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hate one-uppers. They're just so annoying. All of his friends were commenting on the status. And, like, none of my friends were commenting. So I was texting Taylor. Like, Taylor, it looks like I have no friends. Go say something nice. And she's like, congrats. <laughs> I'm so happy for you, too. Also, Ashley made me write this. And I was like, I was like, Bitch. well... I was like, do you, like, how many friends do you have that would, like, care? Like, I I like everyone else's Facebook statuses, so fucking like mine, you pieces of shit. Yeah. The only reason I went on there was to make fun of you. I know. Like, usually I don't even, like, do anything on Facebook, but, like, I saw that, and I was like, I have to make fun of Ashley. You're like, this is never going to happen again. This is crazy. I know, and I, and I knew that this is, like, a thing that all of his friends could see also, so I was like, <laughs> I need to make sure that they know what he's getting into yeah it's it's a lot of darkness and despair from here on out so just be prepared yeah yeah. he's just gonna be wishing to find a way out yeah his life's going downhill for sure oh my mom feels so bad for him because i'm like such a piece of shit to him okay here's here's we're gonna go into a but i have a, a i'm a piece of shit to him for one reason and i need to ask you a question before i get into the reason okay Yeah. when did you and jamie start to feel comfortable going to the bathroom around each other going to the bathroom around each other yeah like 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 with the door open. no not like... with the door open but just like if you're like oh this might be a shit oh um i don't know pretty soon i think like i shit in her house all the time oh and like i would like i would like go downstairs and and like take like a big old dump in her in her bathroom and then be like yeah nobody go downstairs for the next half an hour <laughs> for the next 45 like a, hours it's like it's like yeah like when i poo like people leave so <laughs> but like now obviously we live together so it's like i try and poo when she's not home but sometimes i just like sometimes I poo and then i kind of just yeah she gets a concussion go somewhere else <laughs> and then if she goes anywhere near the bathroom i'm like i wouldn't i wouldn't do that i wouldn't do that if i were you <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't go anywhere near that. Um, but I think it was pretty close. Probably like, I mean, like three months into us dating, we went camping together and like stayed in a tent and stuff. So it wasn't like weird ever. Okay, good. I'm like, because Taylor said that she and Jared were like a solid year and a half into it. And I was like, well, fuck. Like, I don't want to wait a year and a half to feel comfortable about doing this. But to, like he comes over and you I don't have to wait a year and a half to shit around him. Like, like don't shit like, like in the same room. <laughs> Oh, really? Or, like, on him. But, like... But, like, I mean, what, like if, if, what shit, if he's into that? I don't know. What if he's, like, Jim in disguise, you know? If he's into that, then I would say get out. Okay, great. Like... I would say get out when you can. Instead of going to another room, I feel so awkward about it that I, I literally am just, like... Mm, it's, like, 2 a.m. And we're, like, making out. And I'm, like, mm, I don't feel good. Can you go home? <laughs> <laughs> wait so like instead of instead of just going poo instead of just going just poo and then him, him your i'll make him leave <laughs> why don't you just like go downstairs because i just i'm like okay here's the thing in september i had that one date with that one guy and i got food poisoning and i was like yeah. shitting for like three hours and it was loud as fuck and now i'm paranoid yeah. about Anytime I go to the bathroom, I'm like, what if this turns into that? What if it's loud? And what if it's the worst thing that's ever happened? Oh, my God. And now I have poop oh fear. God. I have poop fear now. Like you have, you have insane poop fear. I have super bad poop fear. That's super irrational. I know. So, sorry, Alex. I feel like this is the worst thing to talk about on a podcast. But I feel that like, he like listens obviously, to. now he, he listens to this. Well, I already told so him. Like, I told them already. 
Oh, you told him that you have irrational poop fear. I told him about that, and then Taylor brought it up when we went to a game night, and she's like, yeah, we call it pulling an Ashley when someone almost shits their pants, and I was like, that's nice, I like that. And uh, yeah. so now he knows about that, and I told him that I keep kicking him out because I have to poop, and, you know, we're just, we're, we're in a very open relationship right now. Yeah. Very I mean, honest. Yeah, I mean... It's, I mean, it's way past that, obviously, with me and Jamie, Mm -hmm. because, like, I mean, we live together, so it's not, like, weird. If I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go poo, you probably shouldn't come out of the room for a bit. (laughs) Stay there. Or, like, or, like, if we're sitting on the couch, and, like, she farts, and it doesn't smell bad, I, like, give her a high five. But, like, if if I fart, then (laughs) she has to, like, leave. (laughs) So if you ever want her out of the room, you're like... All right, I know what I need to yeah, do. Yeah, if I'm ever like, okay, leave me alone. I wanna, I wanna watch a movie or something. I just fart and then she'll leave. Yeah. Wow, that's like a superpower. And, and then sometimes she won't come back for like an hour because she knows it's it's residue is everywhere. <laughs> oh my like, God. what kind of like farts smell do you residue? Have? Not like, <laughs> like not like shit. actual residue. Like shit residue is everywhere. Yeah. There's like shit residue, <laughs> but not like it's like shit smell residue. Oh, that's not nice. Not like actual like brown. It's not brown. It's it's it is a, a transparent residue. Wow. No opaqueness. That's it. that's scientific right there. Well, sometimes you get the opaque, and then you just have to go to the bathroom. But... <laughs> sometimes you're like, "This is a nope. This is this is not a fart. This is I gotta get going." I feel like I feel like I've never had like a fart that that was like. It, I farted and then I was like, oh, I pooed. Like, I don't think that's ever happened to me. <laughs> I remember I like one I time when I was 10 that happened to me. And then... Like you farted and then you just shit your pants? I, I remember... Okay, do you remember the the bonus room when it used to be green and have those old ugly couches and everything in there? Yeah. I was standing there and my dad was getting ready to go out somewhere and my brother was running around and I was being like a little piece of shit because I was 10 and I started laughing really yeah. hard and then I farted and I realized I that I shit myself and oh my I just had to go into the bathroom and I cried. <laughs> That's amazing. It was, you know, I really, I have a lot of uh, trauma from pooping. <laughs> I was going to say, because didn't you shit yourself when you were like 15 or 16 or something? No. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you did. Like, I'm pretty sure there's a story on one of the podcasts about you shitting yourself, like, in your teen years. I don't think so. I might have, like, peed myself. I don't, I don't think I shit myself. I'm pretty sure you did. <laughs> okay, tell me the story of the time that I shit myself. No, I, for, I forget. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure you were, like, like 20 or... Oh, like, like right now? No, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure you're no. I'm pretty sure you were like 15. Mm-hmm. And I hope people listening to this can like go find the podcast because uh, there's like a podcast where you told about like a story about how like you shit yourself and like that like I can see like those experiences like building together and creating your poop <laughs> fear. <laughs> this one's gonna be titled poop fear. <laughs> like it might not be that irrational. Like I like it might be a pretty rational fear. It might be. Maybe I have no control over my ass. You know. Yeah, maybe your IBS is just exploding your penis. <laughs> Alex, are you turned on right now? <laughs> like, like, maybe it's just like, if you fart, you shit yourself, and that's just how your fear came to be. Like, I mean, like, if that was true, it would be every time, though, right? Like, that's, like... Well, I don't know. It might just be, like, when you laugh really hard, or, like, <laughs> you when you're shit trying your to lift a heavy object. <laughs> or when you're, like, sitting there doing nothing. You know. Yeah, or like when you're watching Netflix, like, no, like if you're like lifting a heavy object and you fart, you might shit a bit because there's so much pressure going one way and then it might like back pressure your anus. Hmm. Well, I'll let you know if I shit my pants again because clearly I talk about all of my shitting experiences on the podcast. I'm pretty sure you do. So, I, like, yeah. I'm pretty sure uh, I could report every one of my embarrassing stories on the podcast, but I really don't remember shitting myself when I was 15. I'm pretty sure you did. Okay, well, as long as you think so. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go out and say that I'm pretty sure you shit yourself. Okay, well, when you were like 16. We'll agree to disagree. Okay, um, so a lot of things happened to me over the last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing was uh, I was on Kijiji uh, uh, a while a couple weeks ago, and um, I saw this car for sale, and I I wasn't looking to buy a car because I don't like driving cars. Um. So I have a I have a Jeep Grand Cherokee, which I like, but I, I want a truck, 
So then I was like, I saw this car, and I was like, okay, maybe I'll buy this car. So like this guy put this car up for a thousand dollars, and and I was looking at it, and I was like, well, it doesn't look like anything's wrong with it. It's kind of just dirty, and I was like, okay. And, and then I called him, I was like, hey, why are you selling your car so cheap? He's like, oh, well, it has the ABS light is on, which means that, like, the engines are going to explode or something, so I'm just trying to get rid of it. Oh, my God. I was like, well, the ABS light, that's not what that means. But I was like, I didn't want to tell him that. Like, the ABS light is just the anti-brake system, so it's, it's just, like, probably a sensor or something. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, I'm going to come I'm gonna come look at the car. I was like, w- where are you? And he was, like, two blocks away from me. Oh, my God. So I was like, yeah, I'll be there in, like, five minutes. So then I just drive over, and... um. I, I look at this car, and yeah, everything is, it, there's like absolutely no rust. It, it's a 2000 Pontiac Grand Am, and there's like no rust on it. It has like power seats, power windows, power locks, it has cruise, it has AC, it has everything. And it's like in really good condition, it has low kilometers. And so I was like, hey, can I take it for a drive? He's like, yeah, sure. So I take it for a quick drive to make sure that there's actually nothing wrong with it. And then when I come back, I was like, yeah, so it's probably like an axle or like you know, wheel bearing, like the ABS, like it's triggered from that kind of stuff. So, I mean, like it might be like an expensive fix. I was like, I'll give you 500 bucks. (laughs) And he was like, um, um, I'm going to go ask my wife. (laughs) So he like, he goes inside, comes back out. He's like, yeah, I'll, I'll take 500 bucks. I was like, all right, I'll run to the bank. (laughs) And then, so I get in, I get in my car I call Jamie, I'm like, hey, uh, can you drive me back to go pick up this car? I'm buying a car for 500 bucks. She was like, okay. Oh my God. So then she was like, she was like, you're an idiot, but she knows I'm smart. So she like trusted me. I'm pretty sure. Um, so she like drives me back. Well, I like go get 500 bucks out of the bank and then I like drive back. I buy this car, take it home. And I'm like, okay. Cause I could probably like. And then I was like, okay, I'm just going to sell this car. Like, cause I'm going to list it for like three grand and see what I can get for it. Like, I, it's probably, I can, I can get probably two grand for this car. Um, cause I just like washed it, made it look really nice. And, uh, I can probably sell it for like a good piece of money because when he posted the ad, it was posted like five minutes before I called him. So like there wasn't enough time for anybody else to buy it. Mm-hmm. So he, I don't think he realized he was selling it for way too cheap cause he was kind of, uh, dumb. So... <laughs> I, uh, so I was like, yeah, I'm just going to make some money off this car. Sweet. So I can, you know, put some money in my savings. And, and then I was like, wait, I need, cause I, I wanted to sell my grand Cherokee and buy a truck. But if I sold my grand Cherokee, I have nothing to drive until I buy a truck and it's hard to buy or sell it and buy a truck in the same day. Right. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, what do I do? I was like, okay, well I'll buy this car and then I'll sell my Jeep buy a truck with the money I got from my Jeep and then I'll sell the car after so that I always have something to drive. And so now I'm trying to do that, which is just, it's just turned into a very stressful time for me (laughs) (laughs) because now I have two vehicles that I'm trying to sell and, uh, and I have to like, so I took like the insurance off my Jeep and put it on the car because I have to drive the car because I had to clean the Jeep so that when people come look at it, it's nice and clean but then I had to, like, register my car, and now the car is, like, over 15 years old, so, like, within 30 days of putting insurance on it, you have to go get a mechanic to inspect it. Ooh. So, like, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to pay for a mechanic to inspect it, so then, like, I have to sell this car within 30 days. (laughs) So so it's just all stressful, and, like, I was like, man, this is, like, a bad time. I shouldn't have done it this time, but, I mean, like, it was a really good deal for the car. So, I don't know. I'm just, like, I've put too much stress on myself. Like, it's totally my fault. At least like, she'll make some oops, money. A big oopsie. Yeah. I mean, like, if, if anything, what I'll do is just sell the car for, like, $1,000 and then just, like, be like, hey, I made 500 bucks. It's like, but, um, yeah, if anything, I'll make some money. But, um, did I already talk about this on a podcast? You talked about your whole plan, and then you yelled at me because I didn't know the uh, kilometers on my car. Oh, yeah. Did you ever figure that out? Yeah, it's um, 135000 Really? Yeah. That's pretty low. You can probably get some good money for your car. Yeah, my dad said I could sell it for like four grand. so. Yeah, probably. That would be good. That'd be pretty sweet. 
Plus, yeah, he's got a car that in. he's restoring, and it's like power steering, and it's so pretty, and it's a 2008, and I'm driving a 2003 <laughs> right now, and it's beautiful. Wait, wait did you just say power steering? Pa- yeah, power windows, power seats, power... St- <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> your car has power steering. Yeah. If, if your car didn't have power steering, you uh, couldn't turn the wheel. Well, great, at least it has the necessities then, whatever. <laughs> Uh, I'm just saying, like, you know, power steering isn't, like, uh, like an option. <laughs> it's not fancy. Like, it's like, it's like, yeah, it comes with an engine. <laughs> <laughs> like, really, really old cars didn't have power steering. But, like, people's forearms had to be, like, freaking Popeye to turn them. Ah, oh, that's why women couldn't drive. Fucking sexist. Right? Fuck. Yeah. And that's why women shouldn't vote. Right, because our forceps it's, and biceps aren't Because your, enough. yeah, your forearms aren't strong enough to vote. That's true. Um... And then I also went to Banff. Yeah, how was that? For for a uh, for a uh, like a media uh, uh, conference. Thing. Did you meet anyone it was cool? Really cool. I met some really cool people, and and so I met um, I met the former editor in chief of Marvel Comics. Huh. So he's he he created um, like Doctor Strange and like you know have you seen Guardians of the Galaxy? Mm-hmm. You know Rocket. Yes. He created that character. Oh my god! I was like. That's pretty cool. So he created, he, he wrote like a bunch of comics on Rocket, um, like before he was put into Guardians of the Galaxy and stuff like that. So like, yeah, he was talking about like creating these characters and how they're all going into movies and stuff now, which is kind of cool. And uh, I also met the guy who shoots um, Sons of Anarchy, who shot all of Sons of Anarchy, which I was freaking out about. Um, I got to like go out and have like drinks with him and talk to him for like a long time about Sons of Anarchy, <laughs> which was like my dream i was fanboying like crazy um and he right now he's shooting scandal <gasps> i love scandal right and then I, so i started watching scandal which i'll talk about after so but good. yeah i met him and he yeah he shoot he shot all the sons around and he shot he's shooting scandal right now which is really cool um and then i met the guy who shoots um all of pretty much all of the movies that like jennifer lawrence is in so like he shot all of the hunger games movies he shot joy silver linings playbook um american hustle Oh my god. Like all of those movies. He shot like all of those. We got to hang out with him and stuff too. She seems so nice. Um, Did she say that she's nice in person? Uh, she's probably nice. I, you know what? I didn't ask her. Uh, I didn't ask him about Jennifer Lawrence because I was asking him about like, you know, film stuff. But um, Lame. But next time. Next time. Next time. For I'll, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll ask him about That's that. good. Um, and then the, the other guy I met was, um, he is the guy who shot for the last 15 years. Um, all of Steven Spielberg's movies. Oh my god. Yeah, so he, he like works with Steven Spielberg on all of his movies, like since Jurassic Park. Fuck. I was like, that is so fucking cool. That's a hell of a first impression if you're staying on for 15 years. Yeah, right? So um, he was talking about like working with Steven Spielberg and how like if you're on set and Steven Spielberg asks you to do something and you don't do it, like you pretty much your film career's done. Oh my god. And he was saying how, like, um, like you'll be on set and you'll be, like, getting ready to do this, like, huge, huge uh, setup that, like, everyone's planned for months. And then, like, uh, like Stephen will just, like, walk out and he'll be like, yeah, I think we're going to change it. Oh, no. And then everyone's like, what? And then he's like, yeah, let's do this instead. And everyone's like, okay. <laughs> and, like, so pretty much, like, when you're that big, like, anything you say goes. That's um, crazy. Which is nuts. So it was really cool talking to all of them about, like, working with all these huge people. Um, and, yeah, I got to, like, go out and have drinks with them. And uh, pretty much, like, they were talking in the conference where, like, everyone's like, yeah, like, thanks for talking and stuff like that. And then, like, like the, the time that you actually meet people is, like, the bars afterwards, like, at night. So you go to, like, the bars and you start, like, networking with people and talking to people and stuff like that. So it was pretty cool. And I got, like, my uh, my... My ticket paid for for the conference. I got all my hotel rooms paid for. I got all my drinks and meals paid for. Um, so I like you know just ate and drank free the whole weekend. That's I spent insane. sixteen dollars for three nights in Banff <laughs> with like unlimited drinks. It was great. That's oh my god! Did you make yeah, some cool like new networky friends? I did, and actually, um, what I totally forgot to do, I I, I met this. Um, I met this woman who works for a PR company and she 
um, she represents YouTubers. Oh. And she said she represents a lot of big uh, beauty gurus and stuff. And I was talking to her for a while. And um, and she was like, yeah, like I, I, I only represent people who have like over 100,000 um, subscribers and all this stuff. And I was like, uh, she's like, yeah, I, I represent like some people in like Edmonton and Calgary, but not many, like lots in Vancouver. And um, I was like, oh, like, have you heard of uh, like Younging19? And she was like, uh, she was like, no, I haven't. And then like, <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I think she like just crossed 200,000. And she was like, what, really? And she's from Edmonton. How do I not know about her? And she's like, she like, gave me her card. She's like, you need to get me in contact with her. Like I can totally like grow her channel and like do all this stuff. So like, I, I, I'm supposed to like give you her email. Ooh, please do. Yeah. She like, I guess that's what she does for a living. She like, um, she like advertises and like markets youtubers so which is kind of cool like these conferences like lots of the time there's like people from like like i met like one of the co-founders for maker studios oh my god wait who was it because there was a core like Um, five right yeah well he wasn't like one of the youtubers he was one of the business guys Oh okay his name is uh what was his name carl uh, cobsworth (laughs) i don't know yeah i forget what his name was um but something like that he was one of the business guys like one of the um guys like before it was bought by disney Mm. Um, but yeah, so he made a shit ton of money off that, and now he's like, he bought, um, he bought like a bunch of, uh, uh, have you heard of Viral Nova? Like the website that just like shows viral videos, and like, you know, like all those on things on Facebook. Oh, uh, like, yeah, yeah. A, a cat falls down a well, and you'll never guess what happens next. Mm-hmm. Like all of those videos. He bought that website, who like started creating those. Oh my god. Um, so he like owns that website now, he's like redoing it all, and. But yeah, it's cool talking to people, and um, and then there was a YouTuber um, from, I think he's from Ontario, but he's, um, it's RC Adventures on YouTube, and I think he has, uh, he has over a million now, oh. um, but he's like one of the top 10 Canadian uh, YouTubers, and so he came and he did a talk about like how to like be successful on YouTube, and how he did it, and um all of that stuff and how he like found a niche audience and he like started creating content just for that audience and then he like grew that audience and um so that was kind of cool to listen to like lots of the like film conferences are going a lot towards like youtube and stuff like that which is kind of cool that's so interesting that must have been really useful yeah lots of it was i mean like it it was kind of geared towards the older generation like trying to teach them how youtube works oh like lots of it was like I already know this. Yeah. But, um, cause lots of it was like, like he, he like came and started talking. He's like, did you know that you can make a living off YouTube? And like oh. half the audience was like, oh my God, that's amazing. And I was like, oh my God, really? And, like, <laughs> um, lots of it was like, just like teaching people and like teaching people about crowdfunding. Like there was a whole thing about like Kickstarter and how it works. And oh my God, I was like, okay, like, but there's like, we should do like new stuff. So there was a lot of really cool new stuff too. Like there was a virtual reality was a big part of it. Um, there was like lots of VR workshops where you like put on the Oculus Rift like the glasses <gasps> so fun and you like you're in like a 3D environment and you can like walk around and look around uh, so I did like a Jurassic Park thing was that insane and uh, it was it was pretty crazy like you, you start and you're like in a jungle and you're like looking around and I knew it was a Jurassic Park thing because there was like a Jeep parked <laughs> and it has like a Jurassic Park on the side of it and I was like oh shit and I'm like looking around and I'm like there's gonna be a dinosaur that pops out of nowhere so I was like freaking out and you can, like, turn and, like, look all the way, like, 360 degrees around you. So I'm, like, looking behind me, looking above me, like, looking down at my feet. and That is so and, like, cool. Was... Yeah, it was pretty cool. And, like, it, it, it puts you a lot more, like, into the universe because it feels a lot more real because you can actually, like, look around. Mm. Um, so then, like, when the dinosaur, dinosaur eventually, like, came out of the bushes and started, like, coming right up to me, like, it was, like, fucking freaky. Like, <laughs> He like he like comes right up to you and like he like um, breathes in your face and stuff like it's it was nuts. Oh my god! So those things are really cool. So I think that'll be cool for like video games and stuff like that. But fuck, I would totally play one of those video games. That sounds amazing. Yeah, it's gonna be really cool. And like they're like they're pretty cheap actually. Like, um, like relatively like, like you think it would be like a lot of money, but you can buy like an Oculus Rift, like a really like nice one for like five hundred bucks now. That's like cheaper than an iPhone. That's crazy. Yeah, honestly, it is. And then you just, like, snap your phone into the outside of it, and then, like, your phone becomes the screen, and, like, you can look look around, and oh it's pretty God. cool. Yeah, so that was, like, the the whole weekend. Met some cool so people. you had but the yeah, best weekend I, ever? 
It was pretty cool, yeah. And then like I and it was funny because I, I bought my five hundred dollar car the day before I left, and then I drove my car to Banff and back. And the engine didn't give out. No, like it was fine. Sure. Like I was kind of scared. I was like, I was like, I just bought this car and I'm about to just drive eight hundred kilometers to <laughs> to see if it works. So, but it was an adventure. It was fun. Did you just go alone or was it like a road trip? Yeah, I, I just I just went alone. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, I went and I, the reason I got to do a lot of things for free is because I was volunteering, but the volunteering part was like, I just helped set up in the morning and then like, I got to do everything anyways. So it was really cool though. That's awesome. Okay. I want to go to this. I would not appreciate it the way that you do, but fuck, that sounds so cool. But lots of, lots of the things are like really cool. Like even people that like aren't into film would like appreciate a lot of it. Mm. So. That sounds Lots of so the like festivals it. are going like a lot more like new media. It's like, but I want to like go to a festival or like a conference that's all about social media and like how to market yourself on social media. Like I think that's more interesting than anything. Go to VidCon. Seriously, guys, we need to go to VidCon this year. That'd be cool. But except for, you know, I don't have any money. Patreon. If I can go for free, because that's like the only reason I go to any of these conferences. It's like I get to go for free a lot. No, same. Like I think even especially now with like the US dollar, like couldn't. No, the oh, US dollar, the Canadian like it's, dollar. Yeah, it's like 40% more for us. Like, uh. instead of costing $1,500, it costs like $2,200. Yeah. Like, it's just nuts. So. Couldn't go. But hey, um, if you guys Patreon us, we can go meet you. That'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be fun. God, we've been going um, for like 42 minutes. Yeah, this is long. Okay, well, let's end it. Okay. And then we'll... Uh, yeah. We've got lots to talk about still, so next week we'll actually do one in person. I think next week, since we missed two videos, we should do like a video podcast. Yeah, maybe we could do that. Okay. That might be cool. So we'll we'll do some like fun stuff, maybe a Tinder takeover or something. I'll have to re-download Tinder for that. Because oh, yeah. I don't so, need it anymore. Tinder? Oh yeah, I deleted when you started it. started dating him, you were like, I don't need Tinder anymore. <laughs> I'm above Tinder now. Yeah, mm. I don't need any of that shit. None of this bullshit. I feel like we just dropped right, the call. Well, uh, <laughs> no, no, we're good now. Um, okay, well, thanks for listening, everybody. Yeah, thank you, guys. And I'm just going to get into our patrons real quick. So just give me one sure. second. I wonder how, like, I, I feel like my mic is going to sound a lot better than yours. Probably. Up the quality. Well, I think they're both going to sound pretty good. I mean, it's better than just talking to my computer. Yeah. Okay, hold on. I just got to type in the email, so just entertain wait you gotta type an email yeah to log in oh i thought i thought you meant like you have to like oh i've just have to email this person (laughs) don't worry just let me just email this person while you talk on the just uh continue speaking please yeah that'd be great um yeah i also have three jobs now so that's kind of cool but not really because i just i'm working a lot and um we me and Jamie played Left 4 Dead today and shot a bunch of zombies. Because <laughs> I was homesick and she's homesick too, so... <laughs> that sounds fun, you guys. We're just sick together. Okay, we're going to give a huge thank you to our patrons who are basically our tippers, our sponsors, and if you guys want rewards our like friends. Skype calls, our best friends, I'd say. I'd say, yeah. Yeah, if you want Skype calls, if you want any other rewards, leave in the comments down below what other kind of rewards you think would be cool. If you're maybe on the edge of becoming a patron, but you're like, oh, if only they had this reward, let us know what it is and maybe we'll do it. Yeah, maybe we'll do it. We'll do anything we'll do for money. anything for money at all. So yeah. <laughs> thank you to Caitlin Fletcher, to Johanna Johnston, to VD. Looks like we've got a new one and we are very appreciative. Ooh. Thank you. If you want to send us your social media and stuff, we can shout it out. And to Anna and Vanessa, thank you guys. We really appreciate your patronage. Yay. God, we killed that. Oh, fucking nailing it. Good job. Okay, let's end this. Okay, thanks for listening, guys. Okay, bye. bye.